gamers today i'm back with another one and today we'll be talking about the worst landmarks in age of empires 4 and in my opinion what we could change to fix them to buff them now i don't have a script i never have a script i'm just going in yolo but we did compile a list of the landmarks together with twitch out of the landmarks that I personally think are pretty bad and could use some kind of buff so if i'm not mentioning a landmark it's because i think the, that landmark is personally fine there are some landmark i'll give an example like abbey of the trinity from roost it's not great but it does have a lot of uses even though it's not like an op landmark or really good it does have uses in its place uh some saves i skipped completely like jushi and abbasid because i think all their landmarks are pretty good and i don't think any of these landmarks need like massive buffs like a lot of them just need slight buffs to make it better than the other one in the feudal age or at least to make it an option if that makes sense so number one is going to be the english and it's going to be abbey of memes Abbey of Memes, the reason why it's not used uh, is very simple and that is because Council Hall gives you immediate longbows and it gives you immediate pressure. Now you can argue that Abbey of Kings does the same but you need to build a king which is 100 food, 100 gold and you can't do anything else with it. So uh, there's a few ways that I would go about buffing Abbey, Abbey of Kings. Number one, uh, maintain healing in combat. Now, this might sound initially overpowered, like, oh my god, so it's going to heal units for 2 health per second or however much it is in Feudal. Imams already have that in, with Ottoman, and they're not unkillable, it's not, you know, broken. No Ottoman player is rushing Imams and then fighting with them in Feudal. So I think giving the healing in combat with the king and not having to wait out of combat is a buff that could potentially have the king use more and then the enemy has to actually snipe the king so there's like interaction the enemy has to snipe the king in order to stop the healing or the other way i could buff uh, i would buff abbey of kings is to make king for free but it takes like a minute to build or something like that or, or i don't know 45 seconds so then the player can go harass with the king and then when it dies uh, or at least the first one, you know, to, to make for free, like something. Because other than making the king, you don't do anything with the landmark. And that's kind of the problem. You could go for something really strong, like making Abbey of Kings a stable as well. But then I feel like maybe that is a bit too, too strong. So I would say that, you know, one of these would probably be a good start and potentially give the king uh, or give the English that option with Abbey of Kings. Uh, next one for English is Wingard Palace. I think this landmark, uh, if you guys don't know, early in AoE 4, this landmark was used a lot, a lot, a lot. This used to be played all the time. And funnily enough, it actually received buffs over time and now it's not used. Now there's a lot of, a lot of this in AoE 4. The reason why it's not used is because, main reason is because the keep landmarks got buffed. You know, Berkshire, Red Palace, Landmarks like that got buffed and kind of pushed the other landmarks away. So what I would do for Wingard Palace, uh, I think they have cool units in the, um, I don't know what they're called, Footmen, uh, Axemen Boys, and um, the Rangers. So uh, a small buff they could do is maintain those like, uh, you know, packs of units that you can, you can purchase by like a discount and it take a, a minute, minute and a half to build like it is now. But I think that Wingard Palace should be unlocking uh, both footmen and rangers in your barracks and in your archer ranges. Uh, obviously, don't you know put them as cheap as longbows, but I, I don't see a reason why you shouldn't be able to make them out of archer range and out of barracks. There's obviously a clear downside to it. Not having Berkshire is a massive deal because Berkshire is so strong. So I would like to see something like that. And if you know rangers or footmen are too strong, you can always nerf them a bit. Uh, but I think unlocking those two units in your barracks and rush ranges would be really cool and you know you get to see them more and pretty sure that people would actually make uh, Wingard Palace. So yeah again the numbers can be adjusted but it would be really cool to see um, to see those, those units being played more. Because right now even if you go Wingard it's like the amount of time you need to, to build 20 rangers is like five minutes you know and it's like the opponent is not waiting there for you to build them so um, next one is gonna be French and slash JD because they have the same landmarks. So French JD, we're gonna start with the cock. 
Uh, I personally think that Cock is okay, Landmark. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. Uh, one thing they could do is simply give it a slight buff. Again, nothing major, but just instead of the traders costing uh, a 60-60, make them cost 50-50. You know, like, give just a slight buff to, to have people... There's a reason for, for people to go for that landmark. I think the getting the free traders, you know, from economic upgrades is fine. But I think just give it something, right? I, I don't think making the traders 50-50 from uh, Chamber of Commerce is going to be, like, unbeatable or broken. But it just incentivizes people a little bit to go for it. Because um, in the current state, again, it's not bad, but yeah. Uh, and the second one for French slash JD is College of Artillery. I think that, funnily enough, again, that landmark I think is pretty good, but the problem is, similar to Wingard Palace, is a Red Palace is just too strong and it's too good. Um, I personally don't think that we're going to see this landmark, even with some massive buffs. Because Red Palace is so incredibly strong, and until we see Red Palace nerfed, specifically, not the Red Palace itself, but the Arbalest upgrade that it gives to your town centers, I personally think that the Arbalest upgrade should probably not be on your town centers, and it should only work on your keeps, because it is too strong, and you will never see College of Artillery because of it, not because the landmark is bad. Uh, if, for those that don't know, the landmark allows you to produce um, Royal Culverins, it's not just Culverins, and your, your units that you make out of college do 30% more damage. So your uh, cannon, ribaldequin, and culverins do 30% more damage. And it unlocks the artillery ability for your cannons. That's the splash ability that you never see. It's not really used. And contains siege and gunpowder technologies, trains units, and research technology 50% faster. Slight buff that you could potentially do on this is while you can produce royal culverins from it, I don't see a reason why you wouldn't be able to produce normal culverins from your siege workshops once you go this landmark. You kind of unlock it, right? You, you, you're able to build culverins, so why not be able to build culverins from your normal siege workshops? Obviously, you would want to, you know, make them out of this landmark, but just having that extra option to build them out of your siege workshops is, um, in my opinion, really, really good. Similar to China uh, Clock Tower, where yeah, you can build a stronger health siege units from it, but you can also make normal units from siege workshop. Uh, but yeah, until Red Palace is a bit nerfed, I don't see, I don't think you're gonna see this landmark too much. Next one is Deerstones and Kaganat's Palace for Mongol. Uh, Deerstones, I think, is okay landmark. The only thing I would do for Deerstones is have the economic, all economic upgrades on it. That's it. I would like to see, you know, you being able to research wheelbarrow, uh, mining pick, double broadaxe, and everything else, because I don't see a reason why not. I don't think it's necessarily bad. I don't think it needs a massive buff. I think this is just more like um, just a little buff that makes sense, because we have seen this over time. A lot of these kinds of landmarks or buildings are getting the ability to upgrade economic upgrades in it, and I think it's time for Deerstones as well since it is an economic upgrade it gives you movement speed for your villagers early on which is pretty important kaganat palace now this one is tricky and the easiest way in my opinion to fix this is have a ticket system we have that system in the game so nothing new would need to be invented but all we need is a ticket system similar to golden gate or the japanese gunsmith landmark where every 30 seconds or every minute you get tickets and then you can either choose to get horse archers, palace guards, nest of bees, pow pow, uh, knights or whatever else, and you can choose what's gonna come out. That's it, boom. Right now the landmark, if you guys don't know, there's like seven different units that can come out and you can get Mangudai, 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 horse archer. And it's like, why did you build it? You know, it's completely useless. So I think that March RNG, like no one ever is going to make it just let the players get tickets and choose which units they want to make very simple fix and i think it would make the landmark a lot a lot better um next one delhi we're going to talk about house of learning and both imperial landmarks uh house of learning it, it just honestly one of the ways i can see house of learning being buffed it, it has so many unique upgrades in it uh, I don't know if we can see it here, but House of Learning has so many unique upgrades in that you cannot get anywhere else. It has Hearth Erations, which increases the carry capacity of villagers by 10. Honed Blades, 
Lookout Towers, increases sight range and weapon range. Uh, Mosque plus four healing when units are out of combat. And then um, houses gain garrison arrows and 50% health. So I might be thinking, well, why is nobody going for that? Because the outer landmark just gives you reduction on the stone walls, keeps yada yada. And it gives you access. This is also an Imperial uh, upgrade. Uh, this one, I think, is not. Yeah, this is an Imperial upgrade. So, and Court Architects is obviously Imperial upgrade. Main reason why this is get, this is getting taken is because 20% cost reduction uh, on the stone. So you can build up keeps. And I think these two landmarks, House of Learning is not necessarily bad, but the way that Delhi is played, it is bad. Because the way Delhi is played, you put pressure, you get Sacred Sites, then the first thing you want to do when you hit castle is start getting stone to get the keeps down and having that discount on the keeps is quite big and not only that once you get village fortresses you can get them a little bit faster than with house of learning you can start producing villagers now house of learning is a lot slower like if delhi was a a, a bit more slower sieve i think if you if delhi was playing two town centers if some kind of meta came out where delhi is going two tcs I think you would see House of Learning more because you get a lot more value out of it. But in the current uh, state, this is a little bit too too good. So uh, one of the things that you could change so that House of Learning uh, is a bit better is to buff one of these things to where it's like very, very good. And it leans onto that economy military buff landmark. And this is, you know, you're going to make keeps and protect your sacred sites. So. One of the things that you could do is heart durations. While this is good, you could also throw in your villagers have 10% extra gathering rate on all resources or 5% or whatever. Just throw in something to be like, yeah, this is what you want to go if you already have a lot of workers and if you want to expand your economy. I think Hone Blades is pretty good, uh, especially for men at arms. This is a really, really good upgrade. But I think maybe Lancer should get like plus five or plus six instead of just plus three. Because plus three on a Lancer is not a lot. I think Lookout Towers, you could give Towers extra HP, right? Scythe range is okay, but you could give Towers extra 20% HP. So again, this is like a keep landmark. It focuses on you booming with keeps. This is more like map control, units, and economy. So that's probably something I would do with House of Learning personally. So that there's a difference on, okay, this is for... This landmark is for this kind of style. This landmark is for this kind of style. But I do think that with 2TC Delhi, if that is to become a thing, I think you would see House of Learning more than you would uh, Compound. There's another reason why you go Compound, so you can get Village Fortresses ASAP and you can boom up your eco. Imperial landmarks for Delhi are Keg W. Uh, I don't know which one's worse. Hisser Academy, the only thing it does is it generates 12 food per minute based on the number of technologies you have researched and you get three scholars. Now this recently got buffed where you get three scholars. It's okay, but you're paying 2.5k food, 1.2k gold for a university that spawns three scholars that at that point you probably have 15, 20. So it's not really a lot. And what it does is it gives you, I think with every single upgrade in the game, I might be wrong, but with every single upgrade in the game, you get 560 food per minute or something like that. Maybe it got buffed over time, but it's not great because in the Imperial, you need about three, three and a half thousand food per minute to constantly spam units. So that food per minute is not that, it's 720, okay. It's not that strong. Also having every single upgrade doesn't work on every map because you cannot make docks on every map. So yeah, how would I buff this landmark? This landmark should allow you to get your Imperial upgrades from the Academy faster. Like maybe you research them 50% faster compared to normal university. So if you want to go History Academy and rush upgrades quickly, uh, you could do something like that. Or you could also give it some kind of unique upgrade or you could generate food or wood. Now, I don't think it should generate gold, but I don't see why it wouldn't be able to generate wood because then suddenly, hold up, there's a reason you might go this landmark. Even if it was generating three, 400 wood per minute, it doesn't have to be 700. Again, there's a reason for you to go this landmark. Next one is uh, Palace of the Sultan. Now, I think the idea behind this landmark is great. You make the Palace of the Sultan and you get the hand cannoneer elephants. Once again, 
great, amazing, but the fact is you have to put four scholars inside for it to produce faster. And four scholars is four supply that's gone forever. So number one, what you can do is just remove that. Remove it. You don't need to put scholars inside and it produces faster. Or you do need to put scholars inside and guess what? Now you can produce Sultan Elite Tower Elephants from your archer ranges or your siege workshops. You unlock the ability to produce them. And suddenly, that's pretty good. And obviously they would be very, very expensive, but it gives the people the incentive to go for that landmark. So that's what I would do. And if they're too, too strong, you know, you can always increase the cost or nerf them in some way. But, you know, you go to this landmark and then it's like you have two elephants in 10 minutes and they die immediately. It's like, what's the point, right? Next one, mine work. Mine work is a terrible landmark. I've been saying this for two years. It got buffs over time and it's still terrible. How do you buff mine work? Very easily. Ready? Very easily. Give it the OOTD mine work treatment. OOTD mine work is a great landmark. HRE needs the same thing. HRE needs unique upgrades for their units in mine work. Boom, that's it. What kind of upgrades? You could do so many things. Uh, uh, give their archer something, give their spearmen unique upgrades. Similar to OOTD, give them a, a horseman something. And I know you're gonna say, but they already have it. It sucks. It fucking sucks. Give them something better. What do they have? They have the uh, the one where horsemen and spearmen get plus two melee armor. Is that the one? Let me check. Melee armor of spearmen and horsemen plus two. No one ever makes melee units against against HRE because of lens connect and men at arms. It's always ranged units. This this upgrade would be very good. If it was plus one melee armor and plus one ranged armor. Now that's pretty good. That's an interesting upgrade. That's pretty good. That's pretty strong, right? You trade off your economy, but suddenly plus one ranged armor. It's pretty good stuff. Still barding. To be fair, this upgrade is good, but the amount of trading from Akin Chapel that you're doing is nuts. Um, one thing that I suggested a long time ago what you could do, I mean, this upgrade sucks. I'm gonna be honest. This upgrade is okay. What you could do is going mine work actually deletes a lot of your economy because you don't have Akin Chapel. So potentially you could put prelates in Akin Chapel at like double cost or something so that you could actually keep your economy somewhat afloat um, while, you know, you go this landmark. There's plenty of ways you can buff mine work. Uh, giving them unique upgrades is great, but they're not good enough, okay? They're not good enough. Uh, because, or maybe because Akin Chapel is too good, but yeah. Um, next one is Sultanhani Trade Network. Um, this landmark, in theory, it's really good, but in practice, it's not. Why? For those that don't know, this landmark is the trade landmark where you can make traders, put them inside, and they gather gold over time. Uh, what I would personally do is either increase the amount of traders you can fit inside or if the traders are inside they don't cost supply, right? Or y instead of making traders inside you like upgrade something and you, you know, like let's say it costs 100, 100 gold and now you're one out of six and you're gathering 50 gold a minute, something like that. Because having six traders inside is six supply in Imperial but also you don't really have a lot of use for um, that landmark early on, even though it can have some use, like if you run out of gold or something like that. So I would probably say either increase the space that you can, of the traders that you can put in the landmark or have some kind of different interaction because the other landmark that gives you food, Minaret um, Address, is just too good. It gives you so, so much food, it's crazy. Vizier Point Landmark. This is a very easy fix. Uh, Vizier Point Landmark gives you extra XP and it gives you plus two Vizier Points. So instead of taking a five Vizier Points, you can take seven. Easiest fix in the world. Add a unique Vizier Point or two, or maybe even add a whole another tier four with different and new Vizier Points. So there's a reason why you want to go for that. What those Vizier Points are going to be, I don't know, it can be many things, but Usually once you pick five things, you're kind of done. You don't need two extra. And I would like to see a unique 
upgrade with Vizier or a whole new tier with Vizier points, which would make the landmark a lot better. Seagate Castle, uh, that's the landmark, the keep landmark that gives the traders movement speed and armor. I know a lot of team game players are going to be like, this landmark is great. It sucks. One way to buff it, I think, would be to simply give it some kind of unique upgrade, uh, similar to Red Palace, similar to, you know, Spaskaya coming with all the upgrades, similar to Berkshire, because it's just shit. It's just a normal keep that boosts speed on your traders. And that is not good enough in the current day and age. So that's what I would do with it. Next. Malian Feudal Landmark, the, the, the trade one. This one is pretty rough because I don't think you should buff its attack range or something because then it's just going to be used to protect your gold. If the devs want it to be used for trading, something else should be done with it. The problem with Malian Trade is you cannot really get the trade going. So this landmark could, I don't know, allow you to build like a free tower or, or like give you something to get you started on the trade but then i don't know if it's necessarily a good thing for malian to even have that option to trade boom because we know in the past trade booming has not worked out great so maybe just maybe just ditch the whole idea of trading or a very simple buff that could work so right now if you guys don't know when a trader passes in the way of that landmark you get i think 100 percent of the or 50 percent of the food of the total gold but your towers, I think, get 10% of food as total from the total gold. I think. I think that's how it works. So what I would like to see is instead of having 50% on the landmark and then 10% of the tower, maybe give um, towers 15 or 20% of the total amount of gold is given as food. So then you can put that landmark wherever you want. Because right now, the only place you can put that landmark is behind your base in the line of trade and then what is it protecting so yeah that's kind of that's kind of my idea and then festival landmark i think festival landmark is pretty mediocre i would probably like it, it's a lot of gold to use and it's very situational i would give it some kind of passive buff or a unique upgrade perhaps you can also make it uh, a free to use but give it a longer cooldown um so you can use any of the the festivals but they have like a two minute cooldown or two and a half minute cooldown, but it doesn't cost anything. Something like that. I don't know. Maybe less of a cooldown, but in the current form, it's like it does nothing and then you use it for 30 seconds and it does nothing again. It, it just a bit weird. Like I think the festivals are not necessarily bad. It's just the way we go about it is a bit weird. Uh, Japanese castle landmark, uh, which I don't know what it's called. It's like the Buddhist monk. It is not very good. Um, I honestly don't even know what the monks do i think they buff your units when you use wallolo in the wallolo circle and they can debuff enemy units for 50 percent reduced damage i don't know in what world would you ever go that over the the other landmark which gives you the free gold or gives you boost on production it's so versatile and this one just seems very very underwhelming i i honestly what it needs is maybe give the monks attack kind of like the uh, the bold monks from jushi's legacy you know let's get started somewhere and but honestly that my uh, that landmark probably needs just a straight up rework like monks need to be given like either a new ability or something needs to be changed it's too weak right now it's not even like oh it's not usable because the other one is better uh, better it's just it just sucks and it needs a rework in my opinion they missed the mark with that one uh keep landmark for japanese and imperial very easy fix similar to berkshire and uh red palace um i think it probably should receive similar treatment where it's a bit stronger in some way than a normal keep because right now it's pretty eh. so that's kind of how i would go about it byzantines two landmarks winery and cistern Winery, I don't think needs a massive buff. It's an economic landmark. It's an economic landmark. So why can we not get economic upgrades in that landmark? Again, we need consistency with these things. Why can you upgrade eco upgrades in Kura Storehouse from Japanese, but you cannot get eco upgrades in winery? It's literally supposed to fucking, supposed to make farms around it. Why is it not a mill? You should be able to at least get wheelbarrow uh on that and it will also give a little buff to byzantines in general 
So give winery eco upgrades. Thank you. Cistern. Cistern is the castle landmark in uh, from Byzantines. That's the one with the flasks and stuff. Uh, the landmark is pretty bad. It's the one where that it gulps. I don't really know how to go about this. One of the ways you could go about it is is like either just rework it completely, or the the heel is like. It's just not good enough. Like, it doesn't do enough. I think it needs something else. I think just straight up buffing healing might not even be enough. Like, right now, the way that Landmark works is you build it, and the first few counterfranks go, and they get value. After that, it, it's pretty useless. Like, if you have 30 units and the enemy has 30 units, are you really going to out-heal 20 crossbows shooting at you? Not really. So... I feel like it should get buffed in some way, but I actually don't know what to, you know, to buff for this one. It's just a bit of a, a bit of a weird one. Uh, Ayubid Wood Eco Wing. This is a very simple. Ayubid has two eco wings. One is where it gives berries more food, and it gives you three villagers. The other one gives you wood. In Castle, for example, it gives you thousand wood, and that's it. Very simple fix to make this a nicer wing. In castle, it should give 1,000 wood, let's say, or 800, whatever, and give 10% chopping on the wood. Boom. Then you have the first landmark is an eco landmark for uh, food, for the villagers, for eco growth. The second one focuses on the wood line and gives you a little bit of extra gathering rate on it. Amazing. Military wing upgrade, the one that gives you upgrades in blacksmith. I personally think that, land, that, that one, that wing just sucks really badly. Uh, one of the ways to fix it, this might make it too strong, might not, but if you research it in castle, in my opinion, as long as you build blacksmith, you should get the first set of upgrades in feudal and the castle upgrades as well. I don't think you should need to research the feudal ones in order to get the castle ones, because that's the only thing that landmark gives you, is the upgrades, nothing else. So... I think that if you research it in feudal, you should get all feudal upgrades. If you research it in castle, you should get all feudal and castle upgrades from blacksmith. Then you get some kind of value. Because other than that, it gives jack shit after. Like, if you get that landmark and the game progresses to imperial, it doesn't do anything after. Like, for the rest of the game, it doesn't do anything whatsoever. Um, like I said, it might be too strong. Maybe what you can do is have it give you all the upgrades, but you need to build blacksmith and then the upgrades need to research on their own. I don't know, but like maybe the upgrades become free. You know what I mean? So yeah, you have to manually upgrade them, but they are free, something like that. But in the current stage, it kind of sucks. Atabeg wing, which is the trade wing that gives you the Atabegs that increase the health uh, of the units that come out of certain buildings where you put Atabegs. Very simple fix, uh, you should be able to remove Atabegs from buildings and place them in other buildings if you want to. That's it. Because right now, once you put Atabeg in a building, you need to destroy the building and you don't get it back. You have to remake it, which costs 100 food, 100 gold, which is a bit wild. Gamba Wing was broken, now it received a nerf. Uh, I don't think that landmark should ever produce villagers, but I don't like that they reduce the number of tickets you have. You were able to purchase four things, now you're able to purchase three things, and you cannot make villagers, and they increase the price, which is the deadly triple nerf. I think they should give back one extra ticket, so whenever you get Gamba Wing, you can make four different purchases. And the last two, OOTD Chapel, straight up, it just needs a buff. Might work for OTD is really good. Chapel is really shit. It's only 10% gathering rate. Two ways you could buff it. Number one, I would like if it's just a flat 15 or 20% eco buff uh, instead of 10. Actually, three different ways. Number two, uh, you can get eco upgrades in it, like the other ones. Uh, and number three, what I find the most interesting personally is OOTD units are very strong, they're very beefy. And I would love to see the ability of producing feudal prelates from the chapel for OOTD. Now, obviously, those prelates do not inspire villagers, but I think it would be cool if you could make uh, uh, feudal prelates with OOTD so you can heal up your units in feudal age. You go harass, you know, they get weak, you send them home. Because I do think that OOTD needs a slight buff. 
and maybe this would be a good one. And then OTD Burger, uh, it, it doesn't work like HRE one, it reduces the cost of your units and it produces them slightly faster. I think the numbers are just off, like it's just not very good in my opinion, so probably just needs a straight up buff in terms of numbers and the cost reduction on the unit, something like that. That is what I personally think about every single bad landmark in AOE 4 and some of the ways you could fix it. Obviously, a lot of these that I mentioned could be fixed in many other ways. These are the things that I think could get slightly buffed to where they're more usable, but not absolutely broken, or you could rework some of them as well. YouTube gamers, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Check me out on Twitch and Pro Live right now. Twitch gamers, keep going.